There are so many writing apps on the market these days, it's crazy. In this video, I'm going to share my top tips for buying a writing app, and I'll cover the most important features in today's apps so that you can make an informed decision and buy with confidence. What's up guys, my name is Michael Aran with Author Level Up, helping you write world-class stories better and faster. I create these writing videos because I believe that each of you has Stephen King level talent and you just need help unlocking it. If you're new here, consider subscribing and click that little bell to get helpful writing videos every week. And in this writing video, we're talking about buying your novel writing app. It's arguably your most important investment, but you have to spend wisely. So let me tell you a story. I was just out of college, I was broke, I was paying a, a new car note, <laughs> whatever you call it these days. I had student loans. I was getting taxed to the max. I mean, the, number ta the amount of taxes I was paying was just crazy. And I had no money. I barely had money to eat. I was so overburdened with debt that I really didn't know what I was going to do. And right around this time was when I found Scrivener. And it costs, I think, $35 at the time. And that was a lot of money for me back then. I mean, it, I, I couldn't imagine, have imagined paying 30, $35 for something like, like a writing app. <laughs> you know, all, all the important stuff didn't exist back then. So there wasn't such a thing as uh, an iPhone or um, I think it might have existed, but it was not very popular and there definitely wasn't a Scrivener app on the iPhone. Um, writing on your phone wasn't a thing. Uh, the cloud wasn't really a thing. Google Drive didn't exist yet. Like all the stuff I'm going to talk about in this video just didn't exist. All the all the choices I had were Microsoft Word and like OpenOffice. I think even pages you had to pay for back in back when I was a college student. And so I think about that and I still invested the money in Scrivener anyway, even though I knew I couldn't afford it. I found that $35, I sold stuff I owned, I went without like probably a, a coffee or a meal or something, I don't remember, but I know I didn't have the money, but I spent the money and I found the money anyway. And that was the most important investment I ever made because unlike Microsoft Word, which kept getting in my way and I had to constantly figure out how to troubleshoot it and it was just a pain, Scrivener allowed me to get out of my own way. It provided a space for me to write and a space for me to play around and grow without having to worry about the technical issues. And that allowed me to write better, it allowed me to write faster, and it allowed me to be more focused during my writing sessions, which was the foundation of everything that I've built today. I wouldn't be here on this YouTube channel if I didn't write books, right? So that is why I continue to say until I'm blue in the face, that writing apps are the most important early investment that you can make in your career. You get this right, you will be surprised at how much time you'll save. You get this wrong, you'll be surprised at how much time you spend troubleshooting and doing things like trying to paper, do paperback formats in Word. <laughs> so let's jump into what I think are the most important factors in any writing app that you need to think about. First, I want you to consider automatic backup. So this is important because does the app automatically back up your work while you're writing or every time you close the app? This is important because automatic backup should work in the background using a cloud service like Drive, Dropbox, etc. Not always. Sometimes the backups are locally on your computer, whatever you prefer, but there should be some sort of automatic backup. The reason this is important is because it's a protective safeguard. Let me tell you another story. <laughs> you know, when I was first started writing, I, I wasn't paying attention to a lot of the stuff that I talk about in this video and because of my own mistakes, I lost a bunch of my early work. So I lost probably dozens of short stories and I never got them back and it sucked. So every time I consider buying anything, there better be some sort of a backup. So if this is not a priority for you, it should be, but, it, but, but some people it might not be. If it's not a priority for you, I highly recommend developing an automated workflow to back up your work. So you can use an external hard drive, uh, USB drive, and, and tie that to Mac's automator and time machine so that you can do it automatically without you having to actually click. Or you know find a Windows equivalent that will allow you to back up your work. But I highly recommend this because let me tell you, you really don't want to lose your work. It is the worst feeling in the world. 
The service that I use to back up my work and protect it is called Backblaze. Backblaze works in the background of your computer while you're working so that if something were to ever happen to your computer, you have backups readily available so that you can access those. They'll even ship you a hard drive with all of your data on it if you run into any issues. You can check out an affiliate link in the comments. It's just a service that I personally use and have been using for several years and really enjoy it. The next thing to think about is document storage. So if you're an outliner, if you're a plotter, if you're one of those people that likes to do research for your novels, if you like to do the Sterling and Stone method of casting your characters and having all that in the file um, with whatever app that you're using, this is something you want to think about. So does the app allow you to store your research or your extraneous documents along with your manuscript? So, for example, Microsoft Word doesn't let you do that. It's just a linear word processing experience. You can't store your outline or um, any other, other materials that aren't your story, either without having a really huge Word doc that you have to start at the beginning, or you have to have separate Word docs for each element. And that's, that's no fun, right? Again, the reason this is important is because it allows you to store all of your documents cleanly and most importantly, be able to access them whenever you need them, especially while you're writing. So a lot of the major apps have things that allow you to do this. Scrivener is probably the most prominent example. Um, Storius, Ulysses, all, most of the major writing apps have these features, but maybe something for you to consider. The next thing I want you to think about is a pretty important decision, and that's do you want the standard word processing experience or do you want a markdown experience. So word processing experience, I mean, you've used Microsoft Word. Most of you have seen a lot of my Scrivener videos. That's that's what I'm talking about. It's, it's you type it into the word processor. What you see is what you get. It's that style of word processing that has been popular since the beginning of computers. <laughs> you know, what you see is what you get. Um, but with Workdown, it's a little bit different. So you're working with hashtags and asterisks and, and brackets, and you're putting those things around your works because it's going to eventually end up in HTML or an EPUB format or ebook format. And so it, it's a little bit of a different experience. So I've talked to some people that don't like the Markdown experience because it just feels complicated. And I've talked to other people that, that are just fed up or tired of the word process, the standard word processing experience, that they're willing to try Markdown. So just it's something that you should think about. So I recommend that you think very carefully about which one is for you. Now, in full disclosure, I am fluent in both Scrivener and Ulysses, which <laughs> are both schools. So uh, I use Scrivener for my fiction because I just I think it works smoother. And then I use Ulysses in the markdown for my nonfiction, which works really well when I'm doing these YouTube videos or when I'm writing my nonfiction books because I can refer to all my documents in one. The next thing you should consider is how you want to write. So do you want to write with just the app? Do you want to write in the cloud? Do you want to write via a browser? there are three different ways you can do it. So if you think about most of your writing apps, like the, the app videos I've done on this, on this channel, most of those are gonna be an app experience. So that's either an app on your desktop or your laptop or even your phone or your tablet. Um, and you basically write and, and you can sync between those devices. It's your typical program experience. But some people like that writing in the cloud. So they like the ability to have an app where you can sync between multiple devices. And there's that cloud component where you're backing up your work or you're, you're operating with Google Drive or, or Dropbox or, or similar type service. And that's important to some people. And for others, maybe none of that is important. And maybe just being able to write in a browser is important. Maybe, for example, you use Linux. And none of the apps that I talk about on this channel work on Linux. <laughs> so you want a browser-based experience so that you can use uh, the writing app on any device that you use. Just something to think about. The next thing to think about is something that I already alluded to, and that is mobile version. So does the app allow you to write on your phone or on a tablet? Some people don't need this. Some people don't want anything to do with <laughs> mobile apps. And that's, that's fine if that's you. But something to think about is, you know, if you write on your desktop or your laptop and you go to a coffee shop, and you don't have your desktop or laptop, might having the app on your phone be helpful for you? Or are you somebody that writes on the go a lot or do you have multiple machines and so you, being able to sync between them is helpful? Just another thing that you should consider because cloud-based you know, syncing and, and all that is really all the rage now in writing apps. 
it'd be hard I'd be hard pressed to not recommend you an app that doesn't support this just because I imagine many of you have busy lifestyles and I recognize that many of you have full-time jobs and you're not tied to your computer every day most of the time you're not in front of your computer so having an app that has a mobile version and has that cloud capability might be something that you should consider as important the next thing I want to talk about is mobile keyboard quality so this might sound a little strange but I do the majority of my writing on my phone these days, and if any of you are like me, you probably want a keyboard that's gonna be comfortable. Now, I'm not talking about a Bluetooth keyboard or a keyboard that hooks up to your phone or anything like that. I'm talking about the actual in-app keyboard. The best way I can describe it is, is the keyboard that you're using to type or write, is, is, is it responsive? Does it have all the keys that you need? Is it, does it feel good to write or do you find yourself making unnecessary reaches? This is important because one, we don't want carpal tunnel. Nobody wants that. <laughs> and two, you're gonna be spending a lot of time probably writing in this app and you want it to be comfortable. So one of the reasons I like the Scrivener iOS keyboard app is because it's got a little bar above the top of the keyboard that allows you to, to do quick shortcut maps of, of things that you might use on a regular basis like bold, italics, um, you know, changing the, the style of your text. All that I find to be very important. And this may be especially important to you if you use an, an app that does markdown because with the hashtags and the, the asterisks and the brackets and things like that, those aren't always available on the standard app and you've usually got to hit a button or two buttons to kind of get to those symbols. That might be something you should consider as well. If it's not important to you, no worries. Maybe you consider installing a custom keyboard that suits your purposes. The next feature I wanna talk about is distraction-free mode. So this isn't important to everyone, but it's a super hot feature that's in writing apps these days. And that's the ability to write full screen without any distractions. So when you're writing, the menus disappear. You're usually writing in a blank background, or maybe you can customize the background. And a lot of people struggle with procrastination. So a lot of people might find a, a feature like this to be pretty important. Most writing apps have this in some shape or form, but others really emphasize it. And it's an important piece and an important part of the core experience of some writing apps. So if this is an important piece for you, you want to think about the functionality and, and what it looks like and whether you can customize the background or you know all those sorts of things to make sure that you're you're having the best distraction free experience possible. Personally for me, and this is just Michael Oran's opinion only, I don't think this is terribly important, but I don't have a procrastination problem. So if you do, consider it. The next thing you want to think about, and, and, and this may not apply to everyone that watches this video, but what about collaboration? So if you are big on writing books or articles or other things with other people, does the app make it easy for you to collaborate? So Scrivener kind of has a backdoor bootleg way of, of working with people to collaborate, but it's fraught with dangers. Microsoft Word, I mean, you can trade a Microsoft Word back and Word file back and forth. Um, I think they've got a cloud service now that, that allows you to, to work on documents together instead of trading them back and forth. But Google Docs is probably the king in this space and they allow you to, to have multiple people edit a document in real time and it works very, very well. So if you collaborate with people, you know, that might be something to look into with the writing app and understand how that works, what that looks like, what it feels like, and just make sure it's something that you and your writing partner are comfortable with. So the next thing I want to talk about is ebook formatting. So when you're done with your book, how do you get it into a finished format that you can upload to say Amazon or Apple or Kobo or Barnes and Noble? It's a pretty important piece. Now, not every writing app has the ability to export a finished ebook, but most of them have the ability to export to Word, and then you can use that Word doc in another formatting software to create your final ebook product. So if you're one of those people that just likes a one-stop shop, that should be a pretty important piece on your list. If you don't mind the back and forth, if you, know, if, if you prefer more of the functionality of the app, you don't necessarily care about the export, then you can just, ex just make sure it exports to Word and, and you, you can handle it in a program like Caliber or, or Sigil or, or Vellum, which is the one that I use, to make sure that you have a, a good ebook that looks good at all of your retailers. Or if you intend to hire a book formatter, then this entire section is irrelevant. <laughs> 
Following up to ebook formatting, though, is paperback formatting. And this is a Im more important piece because there are only a few apps that even allow you to, to even play in this space, namely Microsoft Word and Storyist. Paperback is a major time commitment and a major time suck for a lot of writers because it's, it's difficult to wrap your head around, especially if you're using a, a, pro a program like Microsoft Word and you don't necessarily understand all the principles behind paperback formatting. The difficult part is, one, troubleshooting when you run into issues, two, creating a, a paperback file that's going to be accepted at, say, KDP Print or Ingram Spark, and then three, making sure it just it looks good. You know, paperback formatting is tough like that. When I first started, I spent hours, and I'm not kidding you guys, hours formatting my paperbacks in Microsoft Word. I got so tired of it, I just said, you know what? I'm not even going to put my books into paperback. I just got sick of it. I, I was tired of the the headers not working right and the, the page numbers. I just, I could not do it. It, it. it was one of the few things that literally made me want to be like that that famous Microsoft Word clip art where the where the duck is, is, is at his computer with a hammer, <laughs> with a sledgehammer. <laughs> that was me. I just, I, I don't do paperback formatting. So I stopped doing it for a long time. And then I started, I tried to do it again. I used for, formatting templates and things like that. And those worked a little bit better, but, but, but not much. And so finally, I guess I hired people to do my paperbacks. And I got tired of that because then you don't control the file. And if there's a typo and those sorts of things. So then when Vellum came out, I just jumped to Vellum and used that. Fortunately, because I have a Mac. Um, but it's, it's something that I want you guys to consider because it is going to take a lot of your time if you're doing this in Word and if you're not a Word expert. And I consider myself to be somebody that understands Word probably more than most, and I still really struggle with this. All right, so we've talked about the major elements that you should consider when you're buying a writing app. To me, to break this down and put a finer point on it, I think people fall into three different categories of, of personalities when you're thinking about writing types. The first are the bells and whistles people. <laughs> the second are the simplicity people. And then the third are the, the user functionality people. So what do I mean by this? If you're a bells and whistles person, apps like Scrivener are probably going to appeal to you because one, they have tons of different apps. And two, they just there's just so much there to dig into that that excites people that like apps like this. The simplicity people, though, you don't need all the different bells and whistles on an app. All you need is an app that allows you to write and maybe export to a format where you can get your book into a final final publishing format. That's really all the simplicity people need. Things like Scrivener probably frustrate them. And then you have the user experience people, which are kind of like a, a mix between the two, right? So the bells and whistles are nice and, and they want some of the bells and whistles, but they don't want an app that's just too simple that it doesn't have have some features that they need, right? And so there's a balance in, in the middle between the two. And so for those people, maybe some of the markdown apps like Ulysses or Byword might make a little bit more sense for them. So I wanna hear from you guys. Tell me in the comments, what do you think is the number one underrated feature in writing apps today? And what do you think is the number one overrated feature in writing apps today? I'd love to hear your guys' comments, and as always, let's learn from each other. And I wanted to let you guys know that this video was sponsored by my writing apps playlist. So I've talked about the elements that you should think about when you're buying a, a writing app, but in this playlist, I actually go over the top writing apps for Mac, both free and paid, and a couple of other things that you might find helpful. So be sure to check that video out, and I thank you guys for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.